Hey guys, oh my gosh, I'm bringing you a another smut reading video because like, honestly, what's life without a little smut? Un poquito. Um, anyways, this is again my story. My story right here. And honestly, it's probably one of the top best stories that I've written. Now, I know I'm looking extra fresh with my bed head, my unbrushed hair, my unmoisturized face, and my pajamas with no shirt on underneath. But you know what? It's realistic. I'm not about to go slap on a face of makeup just for a YouTube video. Anyways, so this story is called Desire. Now Desire, the whole point of Desire was pretty much because I was bored and I needed something to write, but it got a bunch of views, at least a bunch of views for me because honestly I had not never gotten as much views on the story before and I was like, this is really exciting. Anyways, so these two main characters, Judah and Kaysen are, okay. You'll read about it. Like, I'm going to read about it. I don't want to ruin the entire story, but it's really saucy. So, let's get into the video. I'll put a link to the story in the description if you want to read it yourself. And let's get into the video. I don't have any headphones, so you're just going to have to turn your mic up. Turn the video. Oh, my God. It's called, the first chapter is called Case and Hale. Those who wonder what I desire shall find out naturally. A dominant is someone or something that derives power from those around them. Oh yeah, it's like BDSM kinky. If you don't know what that is. Bye. Thank you for watching the video. <laughs> All right. Some enjoy humiliating uh, or watching their suffer in pain. Some enjoy overstimulating them with pleasure and gratification and others like holding pleasure over their head. I prefer to use mine. Submissives are ready to confirm to the authority of will of others, meekly obedient or passive. I lack a person like that. I don't necessarily look for them though. They tend to be drawn to me. I'm not human, so it can be hard to keep them alive. The same cars roll down the road day in, day out. Today, it's quite peaceful. The neighbors have just moved out, but the for sale sign is not yet up. Has someone already bought the house? I studied the house for a few hours, attempting to notice any new cars or smell of the neighborhood, but no one unknown has entered. Nine hours have passed, still nobody. I lie down on my bed that I never sleep in and let my, my head sit to rest. This mystery has caused quite the strain on my brain. I arise to a car older than me, pull up into the empty house across the street. I appear at my window to get a closer look at the person arriving. It's a male, around 18 and 19, comes out of the car. He's young, interesting. Others that lived in this neighborhood were in their late 40s or 50s, so I never worried about young kids stirring up trouble. The bag is really heavy, he whispers to himself. To himself. Something about him seems familiar. Introducing myself might make his transition easier. I peer behind him in a matter of seconds. Hello, I whisper. His body jolts aggressively. Holy sh- Hey, uh, I didn't hear you walk up, the male says, rubbing his head out of stress. Apologies. Do you need any help? I ask politely, trying not to show too much emotion, for he could see it as weird. I- well, okay. I'll take these bags in and you can take these, he asks. Okay. He goes into the house with four bags and I'm currently carrying ten. Oh, uh, you didn't have to bring in all that, the, the male says, stopping and watching me come in with the bags. No worries. I mean, those are pretty heavy. Two of them have my PC gear in it and that one actually has my PC in it, he explains quickly. Relax. It's no problem. What's your name? I hesitate to answer. Case and Ham. I like that name, he smiles. Yours? I giggle. Oh, Judah, Judah Amos, but you can call me Jude. Okay, Jude. Okay, Cassin. I'm off. Let me know if you need anything. I'm right across the street, I smile. Wait, you're two seven? 
no way i've loved that house since i was born i've always admired its structure and design jude says in awe he's cute he blushes when something excites him well come take a look whenever you'd like definitely get settled in first though i laugh i leave judah's house and look back to see him watching me I walk, I walk across the street looking for cars and head inside my house, waving to Jude from the front door. He didn't believe it was my house. A few hours later, a knock is heard at the door. The time is now 6 a.m. I open it to see Jude's smiling face, staring at me as if I was glowing. Good morning, Judah. Good morning, Kasten. I move out of the door to allow Jude to come in. He walks in with amazement, looking up and down the walls and touching as much things as he can. You're cute, I giggle. He blushes and turns his head downward, looking at the ground. It's more like a, like a, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Submissive, I say in my head. <clears throat> so why did you decide to move here? I ask, taking a seat on my leather, te my leather textured ottoman. I always wanted somewhere relaxed and not too crowded. Jude smiles. Pretty much the definition of Ardale. Ardale is like, pretty much the city that I use for all of my books because I kind of imagine all my characters living in the same area. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. Yes, my parents lived here as I was growing up. In that house, actually. He says, pointing to the house he is now vacant in. They left for a while and went to Michigan, and that's where they lay to rest. But the house always felt like home to me, so I came back. Sorry about your parents. People always are, but no one ever knew them. In fact, I do know them. Like, this is not him telling you this. In fact, I do know him. Alan and Amber Amos. I wrote Amber when all this Johnny Depp stuff didn't happen, and now I regret it. <sighs> Took place here 20 years ago. Amber gave birth to Judah at 16 years old in 2002. They moved in 2003 and left in 2014 when Judah was 11. I did that math, okay? I did that math. I saw him playing in the front yard every day, laughing and giggling until a care without a care in the world. I stand up and walk over to him. He begins taking a step back out of fear of what I might do. They meant a lot to you. That is why I am sorry. Jude begins to tear up from my words. He embraces me like a child and all I can do is stand there. I have never been hugged. He releases me and looks up at me with his puffy red swollen eyes. Thank you. Of course, his body is so weak and fragile right now. I shove my thoughts down and proceed to show to show him out of the house. You've got a lot of packing to do. Best get going, I tell him, trying not to sound stressed. <laughs> okay, says Judah. Judah says, walking away. I shut the door quickly. He became so vulnerable with me. His body had no sort of strength to it whatsoever. His voice was small and soft. His cheeks were innocent and untouched. He was perfect. I can imagine his whimpers and moans, his flushed cheeks and flimsy body. I want his body. I want him. I need him. That's kind of gay. No, I'm just playing. All right. I'm going to read the second chapter now. This is... <laughs> When I tell you, she, when I tell you that this is a good story, mwah, mwah, it's a good story. This one's not, hold up. I'm not gonna really say this is smut yet until I read, I'm gonna be reading it for a while if my story doesn't dip on me, but <clears throat> I'm gonna like stop this video so I can get some more stories real quick. Burb. All right. I had enough storage before, but I just want to make sure because sometimes my phone just decides to be like, hmm, no more storage. Anyways, let's read the second chapter, which is called Him. I need to keep my distance from him until I can understand him more. I can't just approach him with such requests. I look around my house in curiosity of a plan or motive for what I should do. I spot a dust mark in the middle of the kitchen and walk over to it. It's his footprint. It's his footprint. I think he has other reasons as to, I think he has other reasons as to why he has moved here. He's no more than he's no more than twenty and he already is away from home and in a house without any support system, I'm guessing. 
Why am I thinking so deep into this? I'm totally rushing everything. I need to relax. This isn't me. I peek at him from my window and see him arranging his furniture in his living room. He seems so peaceful, so kind-hearted, and all I can think about is ruining him. Come dripping down his thighs and dripping down his face. Ugh, I grunt loudly, shoving the blinds closed. I pace around the house. Just be his friend, I shout to myself. I walk outside and approach his house. I've tapped twice on the door and wait for him to emerge. Oh, hey again, Jude shouts happily. I smile at his thrill to my presence. Hey, are you settling in fine? I ask. So far, so good. The heat doesn't work, though. Jude laughs. Uh-oh. Can I take a look? Jude nods and moves out of the pathway of the door. I haven't been invited in. Jude stares blankly at me. Did he invite... Oh, no, he didn't. Okay, I'm making sure, because I'm not going to be messing up and stuff. All right. Jude says, stares blankly at me. I laugh nervously. I have this rule where I where I will never enter someone's house without the permission, you know, because I don't want them to feel uncomfortable. Oh, got it. Okay, come on in, June says in a relieving tone. I smile nervously and walk in, looking around the house and examine, examining as much as I can. The heater is located in that closet right there. Jude says, pointing to a door in the center of the hallway. I look in the closet and notice the problem immediately. You don't even have a heater, I say, busting out laughing. What? Jude shouts. No wonder it's below zero in here. Christ, you gotta order a heater. I'm so dumb. No, you were focused on getting settled in, like I told you to. Good boy. Oh, oh uh, thank you, Jude says, looking up at me with lustful eyes and a flustered face. God, I just want to fuck him till his legs break. Sorry, that was completely out of pocket. I spit. Not he didn't he didn't say that. He didn't say that line to Jude. Okay, that's his thoughts. I just wasn't expecting it. He giggles. Are you alone? You mean am I single? Yes, yes, I'm single as a Pringle. Okay, I smile and head towards the door. Hey, Jude says, grab my arm. Yes? Can I stay at your place until the heater comes? No. It's gonna get colder tonight and- No. I can feel Jude's anger, but he's also sad. Frick. I don't feel like doing all this editing, but it does say that for Fine. I have a guest bedroom you can stay in. Thank you, Cassim. Grab some things. I don't have any spare clothing at my house. Okay, I'll be over in a minute. I walk back over to my house and open my laptop to order the heater. Jude walks in and sets his bag down at the door and stares at the house in awe. You've seen this house before, I laugh. I just can't get over how elegant it is. I take his bag and set it down in the GB, guest bedroom. I can't stay in he- I can stay in here? Jude sounds quietly. Yes. This is freaking awesome. I'm glad you like it. Jude runs and jumps on the bed and spreads his body like an angel. He doesn't notice the chains on the four corners of the bed and I'd rather him not to. He sits up, he sits up, hops off the bed, and marches past me. Where are you going? I smile. He walks in my room and looks around. Where are you in my room? That isn't a guest bedroom, is it? It's your sub's room. When you have one, right? Jude says, it. Jude asks in a surprisingly calm tone. How, there's no way he could have figured all that out from just entering the room. How did you come up with this theory? I smiled devilishly. There are chains on the bed and pull at the end of the bed that goes on the ankles of the submissive to keep him from struggling when you're teasing them, I'm guessing. The walls are painted in a different shade of black called agony, and the floors are made of rubber so when you're fricking them on the floor they won't get hurt unnecessarily. You like doing that, Jude, ex Jude explains. You are a very smart boy, I say walking over to him. No, I'm observant. How observant? The pole, the shade of black, and the floors of rubber would only be recognized by one of a certain community, I whisper. Certain community, eh? Jude whispers back. He is teasing me in his own way. Hmm, what do you want to eat? I don't know, I'm not really hungry. I look down past his face. Okay. One, one moment. It's getting saucy, okay. I look past his face to the rock. Someone's a little excited, I laugh. 
I, I, I'm really sorry. I, Jude stutters while pressing down on his pants. That's not gonna help it. I say, removing his hand from the area. I, Jude attempts to speak, but he is unable to. His face is hot to the touch and his body begins warming from my touch. What do I need? I ask him, expecting him not to answer. You can see. You can use me however you like, master. Jude moans, almost collapsing. Ah, such a good boy. Stand still. If you start using me as support, I'll stop, I command. Mm -hmm. What's the correct response? Yes, master. You know what? I'm not claiming the story anymore. If you're my parents or my family of any kind, um, why did you even click on the video? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out, bro. Okay. I unbutton his pants and slip my hand inside. His boxers are damp to the touch. He's been wet for a while. I begin stroking him. In a frustration, please, please go faster. What? Jude says his body begins to twitch and he begins to clench his fists. Aw, someone getting mad? I speed up the pace on my stroking, watching his body struggle to keep still. I'm, I'm close. Already? Mm hmm. I want you to come, okay? Mm hmm. Jude mumbles, breathing heavily. For me. Yes, Dad! Can I come in? Sure! What's going on? You're in my YouTube video now. Congratulations. <coughs> Oh, you're welcome. I just changed my sheets and you're in them and you're dirty. I'm not. I took a shower. Like less than two minutes ago. What? A shower? Yes. No, it was um two days ago. Two days ago you took a shower? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty fresh for me, man. Alright, I'm ending the video, guys. Um... If you want to read the rest of the story, I'm putting the link in the description because... <laughs> because, yeah, you can click on the link and read the rest of the story. It's at Immortal and the story is called Desire, so, you know, if you want to go check her out, um, add me to your subscriptions list because I deserve to be there. Click that um, like and subscribe, baby! Like the video, or don't. And have a wonderful rest of the week because, yeah. Oh, yeah, turn the post notifications on because I'm a random. <sighs> Thank you. This is my editor right here. I don't even have to edit it anymore. Anyways, turn the post notification bell on because it lets you know when I post a video. And if you don't, you won't, you won't know. You won't know. So you go ahead and click the bell, all right, right now. I'll wait. Click the button right now, all of them. The like, subscribe, and notification bell. Go ahead. All right, see you in the next video.